Hey guys, welcome to Rock Talks. Today we are revisiting my interview with Jason Newstead. Although I did this interview a few years ago, I guarantee you guys will find it very interesting. We got the chance to talk about how difficult it was for him to adapt to the load and reload era, especially because of the images and the songwriting process of those albums. That one time Jason fronted Megadeth playing the song Phantom Lore along Dave Mustaine, why he left the Ozzy Osbourne band, and much more. If you like this interview, please give me a thumb up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, I didn't know you were kind of like uh, friends with, uh, or, or great friends with the Cavalier guys and, uh, and Andreas and, and Polo. Uh, my next question is kind of silly, actually. <laughs> Are you still a big fan of Sepultura? What do you think about the latest releases? I am a big fan of Sepultura. They are my favorite band, I think, probably from the 90s. It's between Caius and Sepultura is my favorite band of that time. Right. Um, they, they are the best at what they do. They are the best in the tribal feeling metal, that rawness, that, you know, the, the Latin flavor into the metal. Uh, no one does it better than that. Puya does it pretty good, but nobody touches Sepultura. They're still my, my favorite band in that kind of energy and that kind of ferocious take on music. Um, I've been good friends, I consider brothers, for 20 years with uh, Sepultura. And, uh, you know, they've come and stayed at my house. I went to stay at their house. We've uh, made music together, a lot of different music over time. Uh, Andreas and I have had projects together, you know, uh, Sexual Turica yep. and uh, Tree of the Sun and many other projects through, through my life. And um, so, We've been close for a long, long time, and their latest releases, I'm, I, they can do no wrong in my eyes. Sepultura, there's no way for them to do a bad song mm -hmm. for me. I like everything they do. Me too. I like every single Sepultura record. Exactly. All right. Um, back in 1995, uh, talking about Metallica, back in 1995, were you okay with the musical direction of Load and Reload? kind of a monopoly at that time. James and Lars really took over the songwriting and there wasn't a lot of room for the rest of us to get anything in. Um, it was a very weird time for everyone. And so I would have definitely liked to see some of the songs go faster and have a little bit sharper teeth, you know. Mm -hmm. They did. They eventually all went together and it made sense that they came from the same time period of recording and writing and stuff. So it all makes sense to me now that I look back on it, but At that time, you know, I was really chomping at the bit to get kind of faster and get kind of crazier. That's when yeah. I was making demos with Andreas and Devin Townsend and all that was 1994, 95, 96 yeah. was when I first started making the irate demo and uh, all that stuff in the chop house playing really scary, fast, yeah. smash metal music. So that was what was in my blood. Um, but it came out okay. I think I was more bothered by the approach of the album cover and the photographs with makeup yeah. and all that stuff like that, I was really having a hard time with all that. As a fan, and as a member of the band also, but mostly as a fan, I was looking at it like, this don't feel right. you know. So um, now that the time has passed, everything is fine, and I kind of look back at a couple of those pictures and think they're pretty cool. Like that one with, I got the Elvis hair with the big pompadour, and you know that <laughs> kind of photograph, the black and white photograph. I like it now that the time has passed, but at the time I fucking hated it. Yeah. Okay, I, I always wanted to ask you that, so I feel great now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank yeah. you. There's a couple good songs like the, you know, um, yeah, uh, Devil's Dance and um, uh, what's the last one? The uh, lyric, Low Man's lyric. I think it's a pretty good song, man. Pretty good song. There's some good songwriting there. It's just not quite as uh, maybe ugly as I would have liked it to be. Yeah, definitely. I, during the nineties. Uh, I I I always say to my friends during the 90s, uh, Jason had the balls that Metallica left a few years ago. You now Jason kept the thrash metal feeling, the thrash metal uh, craziness on the stage with Metallica. So that's that's what made Metallica great during the 90s, during the load, reload, and you know that era. So thank you very much for that, Jason. Yeah, 
Well, thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, man. I think that the live thing makes all the difference, and that's really how I always tried to make up that feeling, you know? Exactly. If the recording was a little bit light, I always tried to make it as scary as possible in a live thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially because of your backing vocals, you know? That's right. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. I love that. So, uh, you played Phantom Lord with Dave Mustaine a few days ago, right? In, in Dragon Tour. Yeah, man. How did that come up? Well, the the managers and agents and stuff had discussed it for a while. You know, like maybe you and Dave could get together and you could do a song. It was when we were first starting even talking about doing the tour. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And then Dave and I talked about it. And we each had our own schedules and we're doing our own things. So we couldn't make it happen. We couldn't make it happen. And finally we said, okay, what song is it going to be? And we start narrowing it down. Is it going to be that? Should we do Whiplash? No. Should we do the, which ones did you write, Dave? We wrote that one, wrote that one, I wrote that one. Okay, so let's do either Metal Militia or Phantom Lord. Okay, no, Metal Militia, that's not going to work. Phantom Lord, let's do Phantom Lord. So finally got to the very last show. Mm -hmm. And Dave goes, okay, let's go rehearse it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right, man. So we went up on the stage for sound check and we played through the song once and it was just a mess. And I'm like, man, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw the video. Anyway, you know, we have to go for it no matter how sloppy it is. Just let's just fucking go for it. Yeah, it was great, man. It really came off great. And, you know, it was the first time that Dave ever played a Metallica song in Megadeth. So that's a pretty big deal. Oh, yeah. And then that I got to actually be the lead singer of Megadeth. I got to front. Yeah. And no one ever has done that before, ever, ever. You know, so that was like two firsts in history of yeah. metal music right there. And uh, for me, as a fan of Megadeth, you know, I mean, way, way back when Flotsam opened for Megadeth and that, they, I, they were my heroes, man. And so to be able to get up there and to do that and do my own thing and like be like a, be the actual front man of the band yep. that fucking felt so good. It was like a little kid, like I was 19 years old again, <laughs> first, you know, Motorhead, man, come on, you know, yeah. that metal kid, no matter all the experiences I've had and all the millions of people that I've played for and all that thing, that moment was I went all the way back to high school in my room, turning up ACDC, let's fucking do this, you know. So it was a, it was like a very special moment in my career. Oh yeah. A highlight of my career to be asked to do that. And if you, I don't know if you know, but um, you know, Dave and I have been friends for 28 years, mm -hmm. and, and we've always had a good friendship. We never had anything where it was bad or we talked bad about each other. We just had a good friendship for nearly 30 years, oh, and that's not really? something you can say a lot. And you know, not a lot of people have friends for 30 years, you know. Yeah. And, and especially so, in the business, uh, in the music in business. He let Flotsam, gave Flotsam the opportunity to play out of Arizona for the first time ever. We played in California opening for Megadeth in 1985, and Whoa. I'll never forget that, you know, because he gave us that chance, we were able to be the band and be a bigger band and everything, because Megadeth gave us that chance, and then 28 years later, here I am supporting Dave again, and we're alive, and we're playing the music, and we're playing it loud, we're 50 years old and still kicking ass. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's pretty special that uh, we've come that far and made that mark and helped invent this music, you know, and stuff. It's pretty special. Yeah, what goes around comes around, like they say. That's right, and as long as you keep chasing it and doing it in a positive way. Exactly. In a positive yeah. way. If you do it in a negative way or a druggy way or all that kind of shit, it's not going to last very long. Mm -hmm. If you do it when you really mean it, when you've been given the gift, and you and you appreciate exactly you've been given to share with people that you can do it for a long long time i saw the video like a half hour ago and i had goosebumps to be honest with you I was like, holy shit this is amazing i didn't know that you were such a great frontman <laughs> so uh, there was some energy wasn't there yeah yeah a lot of energy man so yeah. that was history right there yeah, i could have been 20 years old again you'd never know yeah, exactly. You are just like the, the the same kid that I saw on Live Shit Seattle, 1999. Yep. The same, the same guy, the same. So, congratulations for that too. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this Metallica versus Megadeth thing going on between fans? It's just silly. All those things are always going to happen. David Lee Roth versus Sammy Hagar. Mm -hmm. Scott versus Brian Johnson. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's always going to be like that, whatever, let it be. It's, it's healthy for competition. I know what the real deal is behind the scenes. I know everybody has respect for each other. Now that all the years have passed, we're all brothers, man. We're all, we're all just happy we're still alive. I mean, considering all of the shit that's happened, yeah. drug addiction, alcoholism, yeah. all the other stuff that's happened in all of our lives, and we're still alive, 
and playing songs for people strong, that's an accomplishment of success in itself. So yep. shit and negative talking about who hates each other or that one guy left the band 30 fucking years ago. Yeah. Or something like that. I mean, it's stupid. Look, what, look what's happened. Now we have three killer bands out of all that. Got Megadeth, got Metallica, got Newstead. Yeah. All three killer bands because of what decisions were made and all of us are making good music. You know, somehow it all was supposed to happen. It's destiny. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, you were out of the public eye for a few years. You had an elbow uh, or maybe a wrist injury, right? A shoulder. I had three different shoulder surgeries from 2004 uh, to 2008. And so I was really not able to play my instrument the same. I was still able to do some studio recordings with uh, uh, Voivod and, and those kind of things, but I wasn't able to be the monster. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. was really, there was a couple of years there that I wasn't sure if I was ever going to be able to be myself again. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to play the same or anything. It was a very, very scary time. So uh, You were painting at the time, right? Right, yeah. So I started painting instead. And then uh, that became my purpose. That became the, the same thing as the music where I stay up night after night after night working on projects and not even knowing whether it's day or night and not caring either. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. So painting is my second passion. And I, I have uh, actually become pretty successful with that too. I have a lot of collectors that pay thousands of dollars for my paintings now. And Maybe Lars? Huh? <laughs> Lars Ulrich? <laughs> uh, no, he, he did come to my show, though. He hasn't bought a painting yet, but he did come to my show, my art show. So. Yeah, you worked with Tonya Yomi, actually, on, on the band Who Cares? Yeah. And how did you feel about that? It was maybe like a dream come true. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. When your greatest hero, or the inventor of our music, calls you on the phone at your house, <laughs> says, hey, man, you want to come play bass for me? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay, what time do you want me there, dude? What time? I'll get on my bike right now. <laughs> That's all it was. It was a dream. I couldn't believe it was true. I actually, at first, I thought it was someone playing a joke on me. Oh, really? Yeah. All of, all of our road crew guys are British, you know? Yeah. And so I thought that it was one of the road crew guys playing a joke on me. And I'm like, who is this? Who is this, really? <laughs> no, man, it's Tony. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> um, you released three records with Boybot. Why didn't you stay in the band? Uh, well, it worked out just how it was supposed to. You know, we had songs composed when Piggy was alive. Yeah. We recorded, we recorded all of the songs that we had together. Once those songs were recorded, I was done. Because Piggy is gone. And we, we completed what we had done together, and that was it for me. Okay. Um, and because, you know, right at that same time is when I was struggling with my surgeries. Oh. Black and Blackie talked about coming back into the band, and that's all I ever wanted. You know, when I started, I put millions of dollars into Voivod so that they could be alive again, you know? And mm -hmm. I never asked for anything back. And it was just so that they could live, because I think they're the most unique metal band that's ever been in the history of our time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to make sure they could breathe and live again. And so to get three of the original, the three living original members back in the band, and then Dan comes in on guitar, that was is very uh, much an honor of Piggy. He's very much uh, paying homage to Piggy every day. And so to have that unit back like that makes me happier. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how they're supposed to be. And then at that point, I was already moving on with my other stuff. So about 2008, uh, 2009, we put Infini out. And then mm -hmm. Blackie came back in the band and they started doing their live shows. At that point, I started getting Papa Wheelie back together and started getting my muscles back together and my therapy, building mm -hmm. my shoulders back up. By All right. 2011, I was able to play bass again and I got strong. I started. I went back to play uh, the 30th anniversary of Metallica at the end of 2011 once my shoulders were okay. Then I started writing songs for this band and here we are. Awesome. So it was all very much a natural necessity thing that was supposed to happen. There's no negativity whatsoever. I just played with Voivod in, in France uh, a month ago. We played at Hellfest together. I played the song Voivod. It was Blackie and I, both bass players, playing at once. And so we're, we are uh, we cheer each other on. We're fans of each other's bands. We wear each other's bands t-shirts. And, you know, that's how it is with Voivod. They're my brothers forever. And why didn't you stay in Aussie with Aussie Osborne? He, uh, we had done the whole 2003 European tour, and I was playing in Voivod and Ozzy at the same time. Mm -hmm. so during the summer of uh, the Ozfest of, of 2003, 
I played 62 shows in 60 days. Whoa. Because I played in both bands. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, and then... That's a lot. So, when Sharon asked me to join the band, because Robert went to Metallica, yeah. two, two days later, Sharon called me and asked me to join their band. I went and joined their band. I went through all of the summer and played the shows that I just explained to you. Then we were going, because I made the deal with her, you know, I'm in Voivod, and I don't, I'm not leaving Voivod, so if you want me to play in Ozzy, you have to let Voivod open all the Ozzy shows. Mm -hmm. And she agreed to that. Oh. But we were preparing to go to Europe on the Ozzy tour following Ozfest. Ozzy got in an ATV accident and broke his collarbone. Yeah, I remember that. The tour got canceled. And so I went on with Voivod making records because Ozzy didn't have a band. He wasn't playing. He was he was in the hospital for six or eight months or whatever. So there was no Ozzy Osbourne band. I went on with Voivod to make another records and records and records and kept on doing my thing. So, you know, it was because Ozzy uh, broke himself, basically. Yeah, oh, now, it, now, now I see. And what do you think about Robert Trujillo's performance with Metallica, now that you mentioned him? I think he's a great, great, great bass player. Mm -hmm. um, we've been friends for at least 20 years. Um, I, I thought he was a great bass player in uh, Suicidal. I had yeah. all the Infectious Grooves records. Yeah, I amazing still, and funky I group. I thought he was the shit in Infectious. That was his band. He wrote all those songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I always looked at him as a great, great bass player. I think he's kind of more of a funky kind of bass player yeah. as, you know, for that. But he has fit into Metallica now. He's made his own way. It took eight or ten years for him to find his place, I think, because people were so convinced by my thing over time, you know. Yeah, but still. still, he's, uh, still. I think he's a fantastic thing for Metallica, and they're powerful, and they're out there still setting the standard, and I'm always a big fan of Metallica and a big fan of Robert. Yeah, but Robert can't do your vacuum vocals. That's true, but he can play bass uh, probably better than me in a lot of spots, so that's okay. <laughs> we kind of, we switch things. We uh, bob and weave, you know. If you like this interview, please give me a thumb up, leave a comment, and share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.